Welcome back team, heaps of exciting stuff to share. This episode, the big news is the new top speed of the Warhorse. Thanks to my Airbox mod, can't wait to show you that. It's pretty cool what I've come up with. Last episode, I was delving into the Airbox trying to understand a better way to not only reduce the amount of dust getting to the air filter, but increase the Airbox pressure and airflow itself and that has been the biggest problem with this warhorse actually dusting itself when you're riding solo if you're not following another vehicle and riding in dust your air filter system shouldn't be gathering dust this is definitely a flaw in this design that all the dust in here is blocking the air filter anyway i have come up with at least a power increase massive and i think that's gonna also help with the dust issue before i pull this off and show you let me let me show you the outcome first don't forget to like and share this video hit the subscribe button <laughs> wow instant boost immediate difference just the low end torque it just effortlessly takes off but the real difference is the there's a there's a real pull now in the mid-range feels like a bigger capacity bike I've got the GPS on I want to get an accurate speed you look at the difference it's about five kilometers I think that's about right. In general, analog speedos are about 5Ks out. Okay, horse, see what you got. She feels like she's hauling ass. Wow, that was honking. I think that might be a new top speed record. How do I find the top speed? Because she was hauling ass then. That's the fastest the big girl's ever gone. I could feel it. It's just got more mid to top end power now. You can just feel it. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> 164 kilometers an hour. That's like nearly I reckon that's 12, 13, 14 kilometers faster than she's ever been. Wow. She's got that clean air helping get force fed into there now. Pretty cool, huh? New top speed. Right, this is, this is why this is happening. So, what I did was I wanted to utilize these ports, these two air ports here. Like, they've cut them open for a reason, but the standard RDO4 does not utilize this airflow at all. It's just for looks. It's stupid. They've actually sealed it off here and made the airbox draw all its air from the cavities up under the seat, around the side plate. This whole turmoil of dust it's pulling it in. It's actually got negative air box pressure that way, not positive. I'll explain the difference about that in a second. Now, probably gonna drop a couple of pieces of foam out now, till I come up with a more. There goes one little one. Right, have a good look at this. Have a good look at what I've created here. So, the path for the air now is straight through these straight through these side gills and creating a positive air box pressure right behind this side plate. You don't want vacuum in there because when you create a vacuum in here, it's basically pulling in air, drawing air from this void here, all this turmoil and dust. The, the proof's already in the top speed. Knocked her out of the park, 165 kilometers an hour. That's 15 on top. I, don't, I think when I was riding with Grabo and Rodney, I got 150 max out of her. The long-term test will see how this filter's holding up and how much dust may actually be getting in there. 
even though dust will still come in through here, I reckon I've knocked 80% of that dust issue out of it. So you can see here, look at all, look at how dusty that is there, but on the inside it's very clean. So it's actually defending, and you saw, you saw the dusty tracks I was ripping through up there on the walls. So what I've done is blocked off any airflow coming from other than these two intake ports here. Here's the main mod, right? See this zip tie here? I've folded this flap back, because that flap, when it folds out, it, it seals off the airbox against here. It, it blocks the gate. It renders those two intake ports void, right? So in doing that, you can see now I've completely opened up and created that positive airbox pressure. The engine doesn't have to work as hard to pull that air in. You know, an air filter can work better when there's positive pressure on the other side. If you've got neg negative pressure, then the engine is doing all the work. And that creates multiple problems, especially for carbureted engines, right? Get your head around this. On the other side of an air box, so through your throttle body or carburetor, the process is the same. You don't want vacuum as such, you want velocity. So in terms of a carburetor, you want the vacuum to draw the fuel up the main jet to happen because of air velocity not because of vacuum pressure created by the motor. So well, the point I'm trying to make is, as the air velocity slows down because of a blocked air filter, it massively increases vacuum. And with carburetted engines, that air velocity slows down, but the vacuum increases. So what happens is, you get less air, but more fuel. So your mixture just exponentially goes richer. High air velocity, low vacuum creates that perfect mixture and lets, lets your jets control the mixture. As the air filter blocks, you get increased vacuum across the Venturi. So instead of air velocity drawing the fuel up, you're getting vacuum drawing it up. And it's just like, like a straw going from your engine straight into your float bowl and just sucking way too much fuel. You put a rag over your carby and you try and run your motor and you listen to this thing just, just choke and thump out with fuel. Black smoke will be pouring out and it'll just blah, 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 done. So your air filter is so in charge of your engine's performance. Your airbox pressure is so in charge of your engine's performance and not just performance, fuel efficiency. You, you know, you can waste up to five horsepower just for the engine trying to draw a breath through a cloggy filter. If you can alleviate the, some of that negative pressure in the airbox simply by creating positive pressure, look, I've modified nothing. That's the standard RDO4 little intake snorkel. I have redirected the airflow. I've now created a direct, somewhat force-fed path of clean air clean enough that it's coming from here. At best on the real dusty tracks, I might get a bit of plume off the front wheel and get a little bit of, you know, some dust particles come up and go in. So be it, you know. But what I've done is cancelled out that negative pressure of not sucking dust from the back wheel anymore, or at least, look at that, look at the difference. So that's, that's, on, the out, that's on the outside of the bike. I've sealed off this little environment in here as best I can. I'll come up with a better, you know, I'll, I'll start with a big solid piece of foam and I'm, I'm going to seal that off even better. I didn't want to cut that flap off because it's the standard Warhorse item, you know. You can see now I've completely opened up and created that positive airbox pressure. And the difference is huge. 15 kilometres an hour up top. She gets up and boogies now, and it's gonna, it's just gonna have such, so much better fuel economy, and it's not gonna dust the air filters, okay? Job done. Let me tell you a quick story just to back this up. The ultimate positive pressure air box was my 2007 RMZ 250. I rode the entire uh, 07 Australian 4-day enduro in Coffs Harbour. I did that whole event on one air filter. 
Every Aussie out there that enduro races calling bullshit now, no. I did. Every day in my work period, I'd take the seat off, I'd look at the air filter, and I'd be like, I'm not touching that. That does not need to come out yet. Bike's running perfectly, it's not dusted. And typically, Australian four-day enduros are dust bowls. The major factor in that, uh, I have to add this, that motor had so much torque that you could just short shift it and really use the bottom end, so it wasn't revving its tits off. Motors that are dependent on high RPM to create any power, they need airflow, they need velocity um, to produce any power. Whereas you get those motors that have just got huge torque off the bottom, they're just, they're just sipping air, right? And so it's like when you go through all this dust, if you're just on the pilot jet, just teasing the, you know, the, the mid-range, you go through all this dust, it's almost holding your breath. And so that combined with a perfect positive airbox pressure, that to this day is the most amazing uh, airbox arrangement I've ever known on a, on a dirt bike. Now, just to finish off, I wanna go, I wanna just address some comments people are making uh, on, the, on, the, on the previous video. People are very quick to highlight how, how little they actually know um, in the field, practical application, when they fire these comments back as if they're trying to educate me. On the channel, I've noticed people talking about the air intake configured so it pulls air through this side and cools it. That's not cooling it, the friggin' thing's up here. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with it. There's the regulator rectifier there, right? Way out in the breeze. Look at all that open air. That, that plate is that side plate there's like I could fit my hand up around the other side of that regulator rectifier that's way out in the breeze and if you look they've got this little intake airflow this is an upgraded one for lithium anyway it's not this standard um, regulator rectifier that used to fail from overheating so understand this this whole self dusting thing and the fact that I've gone to a foam filter to protect it. Understand this, the air filter is not the problem. The paper elements that are installed in here are perfectly fine for the motorcycle in 80% of conditions. In the middle of winter when, you, when it's rained in Australia and there's not a speck of dust, you don't even need that pre-filter because you're, you're running through clean air. There's no dust, right? You just need it there to stop insects finding their way in and getting sucked in or the odd bit of rock or grime at risk that something might be bouncing around in there and make its way into the air, air intake, right? The paper filter elements are actually really good air filters for the right applications. The negative air box pressure drawing dust from around the motorcycle is the problem, not the air filter, okay? So in trying to protect my motor in the conditions that I ride the Warhorse, which is just bulldust Australia, following trucks, um, and yeah, I'm gonna be riding with other people. Inevitably, you need ultimate oiled filter uh, filtration. Now, someone mentioned that they were concerned that the a foam filter around the paper element was going to constrict the airflow. No. In particle form, if you look at paper element as the first gate, right? First gate, which is like a 5-10 micron filter. I don't know. Anything that you put after that above 5 to 10 microns is not going to affect uh, the ability for your engine to draw air through that paper filter. So what you've got to look at is when you get a foam filter and you drench it in oil, it's probably still only at like a 10 micron, maybe 20 micron, the gaps in that oil. But that is enough. The labyrinth and the path that that has to take through all the, the foam granules, I don't know what you call it, that's enough to catch it, catch so much shit to almost not even need the paper element on the other side. To answer your question, I've added 
foam filter oiled on top of the paper. Yes, I did create a positive airbox pressure. Added 15 kilometers an hour on top. The engines, I can feel it on takeoff. The Warhorse is is working so much easier to draw its its idle breaths and just take off. The torque off the bottom, the mid-range boost is so obvious that uh, no, adding a foam filter oiled is not going to restrict the airflow. The only time it's going to restrict your airflow is when it's choked out with dust and you'll know. Time to clean it. Yep, she's definitely got some mid-range boost about her now. <laughs> Doesn't mind cracking a slide, the old horse. Watch out for kangaroos. They're usually pretty dormant when it's windy and middle of the day like this, but anyway, can't be too careful. Oh, she's hauling ass now. Should give the old T7 a run for her money. <laughs> Not really, but sort of. On the right road, the walls would run with a lot of modern bikes. You get that, just the right amount of, perfect amount of torque and tractability. But geez, she just steers so good. Such a boss. <laughs> oh, horse. You've never run so good. I'm stoked. I could just drift gravel roads all day on the horse. She just loves it. Be nice if this was a bit more open. I'm just a bit, a bit cautious of the, the tunnel trip sections and having no window into kangaroos. Opens up a bit more up here. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. Can you believe it? 165 kilometers an hour. Thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to like and share this video. Hit the subscribe button. Um, yeah, plenty more to come with the war horse. And next move I need to make on the iron horse is get the powder coating done. And then the rebuild is underway.